Armando Hasurugan, Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group. For the latest videos, please visit Facebook Armando Hasurugan, and here you can also like. Please ask questions, answer questions, and post some interesting things, such as your artworks. And you can also change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. Let's talk about insulin. Insulin is a polypeptide hormone. And as I mentioned, it has a major role in the regulation of macromolecules within our body and has a major role in uh, the homeostatic condition of metabolism. But the main role insulin has is in storing excess energy, as in storing fats, lipids, carbohydrates, and proteins, such as during a fed state. So now I would like to show you the associated organs insulin has an effect on. So for example, here we have the intestines, here we have the blood, here we have the liver, skeletal muscle, lymphatic circulation, adipose tissue, and finally the last organ, the pancreas. Now insulin has a major effect during the fed state. So basically just after we eat. Because after we eat, we would have many macromolecules running through our intestines, such as glucose here, amino acids, and then we also have fats. Now let's concentrate on glucose first, what happens here? Well, glucose will be absorbed by the blood, and the pancreas will then secrete insulin. And insulin will promote the uptake of glucose from the blood into the liver. Insulin will also promote the conversion of glucose to glycogen the storage unit of glucose. Insulin will promote the conversion of glucose to pyruvate and then to acetyl-CoA by glycolysis. Insulin will promote acetyl-CoA to triacylglycerols. And then triacylglycerols can then be packaged up into very low density lipoproteins, which can then be stored as um, triacylglycerol in adipose tissue. So insulin does all these things. Insulin also has effect on amino acids. Amino acids will be um, absorbed by the blood. Insulin will, call, uh, will promote the uptake of amino acids from the bloodstream to the liver. And then insulin will promote um, protein, uh, prote proteogenesis, so therefore promoting protein synthesis. Insulin also has effects on fats, but fats are absorbed through the lymphatic circulation, not through the blood. And insulin will promote uh, the storage of fats within skeletal muscle um, as fatty acids. Insulin will also promote the synthesis of triacylglycerol from fat in the liver. So that was a, a brief overview of the effects insulin has on the different types of organs in our body. And as you can see, insulin has the major role of storing excess energy, uh, such as during the fed state, when we have a lot of macromolecules running through our intestines that need storing. So now let's look at insulin synthesis. And insulin synthesis occurs in the pancreas, but particularly in the beta cells of the pancreas because it is within these beta cells that insulin is secreted from. So let's begin with the ribosome, which translates mRNA into a particular protein. And this protein is actually for insulin. So this protein will form what's called a pre-pro-insulin, which is a long polypeptide. And then, this pre-pro-insulin will get uh, transported into the endoplasmic reticulum where it will get sorted out and cleaved up a bit to form pro-insulin. And the pro-insulin consists of three segments, A, C in the middle, and B. Now, this pro-insulin will then travel to the Golgi apparatus where it will get cleaved up into the associated segments. The C peptide, which is in the middle, and also the A and B peptide, which will form insulin. The A and B peptide will be bounded together by disulfide bonds. And this is what insulin is. So insulin is connected by disulfide bonds from the A and B peptides from pro-insulin. And the C peptide will then travel to, uh, C peptide has a role in the cell membrane so for G protein signaling in some way. So the, this insulin now will, can then be secreted into the bloodstream where it will travel to its target tissue or associated organs. Now, for example, it will travel to the liver, let's just say, or it can travel to the skeletal muscle. So now let's zoom into the membranes of the skeletal muscle and liver. So the membranes are obviously different, but the insulin receptor is the same because insulin receptor is a tyrosine kinase receptor. 
and it consists of two alpha subunits, two beta subunits, and tyrosine kinase in the intracellular fluid, in the inside. Tyrosine kinase is an enzyme, and it's inactive when it's not phosphorylated, when it doesn't have a phosphate group. But usually tyrosine kinase has autophosphorylation, which means that it always has a phosphate group. So tyrosine kinase, when it has a phosphate group coming off it, it is active. Okay, now within the, with inside the cell, in the cytosol, in the intracellular fluid, there's a target protein uh, with, with a tyrosine amino acid, for example. And this target protein is inactive when it's not phosphorylated. So how does it become active? And how does the tyrosine kinase receptor, the insulin receptor, become stimulated? Well, when insulin travels to the target organ, for example, the liver, the two insulins will have to bind to the two alpha subunits, which will then cause tyrosine kinase to phosphorylate the target protein in the inside of the cell. So this target protein will become phosphorylated. It will have the phosphate group attached to the tyrosine amino acid. And now, because this target protein is phosphorylated, it is active. And so because it is active, it can then cause the intracellular effects of insulin. I hope you understood that. That was a brief overview. But now let's look at, look at this uh, tyrosine kinase receptor in a bit more detail. So let's look at it again in a more bigger picture. So here we have the liver. We'll cut a cross section here and look at one of the cell of the hepatocytes, the cell membrane of the hepatocytes. So the tyrosine kinase receptor, which is for insulin, the insulin receptor, consists of four subunits and two uh, in, inner enzymes. So it consists of two alpha subunits, two beta subunits, and two intracellular tyrosine kinase bounded to the beta subunits on the inner membrane. And the tyrosine kinase is autophosphorylated, so it contains many phosphate groups. The alpha and beta subunits, as well as the alpha and alpha subunits, are connected by disulfide bonds. Once insulin binds to the alpha subunits, there needs to be two insulin binding to the alpha subunits, it will cause an inner, pro inner membrane protein, known as IRS1, to be phosphorylated. And this will activate IRS1, which is the target protein. IRS1, once phosphorylated, has many effects on that particular cell, such as it will promote growth um, and for gene expre expression. IRS can uh, also promotes glycogen synthesis for storage of glucose. IRS1, once phosphorylated, will also promote fat synthesis, so the synthesis of triacylglycerols. IRS1 will also stimulate protein synthesis. Once it absorbs amino acids, it will make proteins. And also importantly, IRS1 will increase the expression of glucose transporters. What this means is that glucose transporters in the inner membrane will travel out with, to the plasma membrane, to the outer membrane. And in this case, the liver has a special glucose transporter called GLUT2. Now it should be noted here that diabetes, or mainly insulin resistance, is a condition when insulin itself cannot bind to the tyrosine kinase receptor, and therefore IRS cannot increase the expression of glucose transporters, and therefore glucose just accumulates in the bloodstream, increasing blood glucose levels. And so liver, as I mentioned, expresses specifically type 2 GLUT transporters. Other organs has different GLUT transporters, like the muscle has GLUT4. Anyway, the increased expression of GLUT2 transporters will increase the absorption of glucose from the bloodstream into the liver. So glucose is inside the liver now. And glucose can then, be, can have, can then have a number of fates. It can be stored as uh, glycogen, as in glycogen synthesis, or it can be converted to fats, which will then be packaged up as uh, VLDLs, very low density lipoproteins, or lipoproteins in general, and to be exported into the adipose tissue to be as well stored. So insulin, now let's look at the broad picture here. So insulin essentially lowers blood glucose levels as well as, uh, store, and as, well as it stimulates the absorption and storage of excess energy. So let's go, 
let's let's go over some, um, the major effects insulin has um, in the body. So insulin stimula uh, inhibits the degradation of glycogen to glucose. So it inhibits glycogen phosphorylase, the enzyme responsible for this. Insulin promotes glucose uh, glucose conversion to glucose 6-phosphate. So it stimulates the enzyme hexokinase. Insulin also stimulates the conversion of glucose 6-phosphate through a number of uh, through a series of um, enzymes to glycogen. And so essentially it stimulates glycogen synthase, the enzyme for glycogen synthesis. Insulin also increases the expression of glucose transporters in the liver. So increases uh, glucose transport to the liver, so it increases GLUT2 transporters. Also, insulin uh, increases the expression of GLUT4 transporters in the muscle and adipose tissue. Insulin also stimulates ribosome activity to synthesize proteins, so protein synthesis. Insulin also um, inhibits, particularly, protein degradation because it wants to store excess energy. It wants to store amino acids. Insulin also promotes um, the conversion from glucose to acyl-CoA, so it promotes glycolysis, as well as insulin promotes um, fatty acid synthesis from acyl-CoA to triacylglycerols. And finally, insulin also inhibits hormone-sensitive lipase, which is responsible for the degradation of triacylglycerols to fatty acids. Of course, insulin also prevents beta oxidation, the conversion of fatty acids into acyl CoA. In summary, insulin is important in storing excess energy in the forms of glycogen, triacylglycerols, and proteins in different, organ, in different organs. And that concludes basically this video on insulin. Please watch the video on glucagon if you haven't watched it yet. Uh, please comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you very much.